the June Ought 9 exam. We're still on page 8. Let's see, question 53. Two oppositely charged parallel metal plates, one centimeter apart, exert a force with a magnitude of 3.6 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons on an electron. Uh, calculate the magnitude of the electric field strength. Show all work. Now let's start by lifting, uh, listing our knowns. We've got one centimeter. I'm going to call that point zero one meters. That's my distance between the two plates. There's a force of 3.60 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons. And it's on an electron. And that's a hint. And we want to know the electric field strength, whatever that is. So let's start looking for hints. Well, electric field strength is E, so we're looking for E. And we've got an electron. So that's going to be useful. Watch this. We go find the formula. Now, electric field strength is F divided by Q. E is equal to... F divided by Q. Well, I've got F. That's there. I wish I knew what Q was. And uh, Q, of course, is the charge. So that's right there. Charge on an electron. And this is where it's glad you actually went to class. An elementary charge. That's either the charge on an electron or the charge on a proton. E. And that charge is 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So the charge on electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So it looks pretty straightforward from here. We don't even need the distance. We say that E is equal to the force, 3.6 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons per 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Make sure you type it into your calculator properly. And I'm coming up with 22,500. The units would be Newtons per Coulomb. Newtons per Coulomb, electric field strength. I guess I could call that um, 2.25 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 newtons per coulomb, and that works. Question 54. On the diagram in your answer booklet, sketch at least four electric field lines with arrowheads that represent the electric field around a negatively charged conducting sphere. Well, here's a space. There's our negative sphere. Now, electric field lines are drawn using a positive charge. So if I put a little positive here, it would be attracted to the negative. And they want how many? Four. At least four. So if I had a negative sphere here, the positives would be attracted towards it. If this was a magnet, we would use a north pole as our test charge, but it's electric, so we use a positive. Question 55. In the space in your answer booklet, draw a diagram of an operating circuit that includes a battery, two resistors in parallel, and an amp meter. And on the electric thing, you've got the symbol circuits. So there's a battery, there's a resistor, and there's an amp meter. So we've got to build this thing now. We've got uh, question 55. So we want to start with a battery. I turned it sideways. I want two resistors in parallel, which means they each have their own path. Not very neat. And I need an amp meter, and an amp meter is wired in series with the circuit, which means the current has to go through an amp meter. And then we've got to complete the circuit and uh, a battery. 
two resistors wired in parallel, and an amp meter that'll measure the total current in the circuit. I think that'll do it for me. Question 56. Calculate the resistance of a 900 watt toaster operating at 120 volts. Show all work, including the equations and substitution with units for two points. So let's see, 56. First thing we do is list our loans. We know we're looking for resistance. It's a 900 watt toaster. That's the power of the toaster, 900 watts. And the voltage is 120 volts. Let's go see if we can't find a formula. And here we've got power is equal to voltage times current, current squared times resistance, or V squared over R. I think that's the one we need. Power is equal to V squared over R. So I've got to get R by itself. So PR equals V squared, multiply both sides by R. And then V squared divided by power would give us our resistance. Now we've got to plug in our knowns with units. So 120 volts squared divided by 900 watts is our resistance. And get our calculator out. Don't forget to square that 120. And I'm coming up with 16. The unit of resistance is ohms. So I use the letter omega. And that should be my resistance. All right, question 57. A student and a physics teacher hold opposite ends of a horizontal spring stretched from west to east along a tabletop. Okay, the tabletop is going to help do this problem for us. So here we are. We're west, and here's east. Now the tabletop prevents this from being moved up and down. So it's got to be moved side to side. And to produce a transverse periodic wave, somebody's going to have to move this north to south. So if you're standing there, the spring is on the table, it'd be north to south. Now we do this lab out in the hallways at our school, and uh, if you're standing out there in the open, you can move it up and down. But because it's on a tabletop, that prevents that option. We also have the option of moving it sideways, which is sometimes easier for this particular lab. And in this case, it's the only thing that works. So for 57, uh, the answer has to be uh, the spring must be moved north and south. Nah, I like that. The spring is moving north and south. For one point, they're going to be looking for north and south to give you the point. And there it is.